What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to I Am MJ TV. I'm back with another video. Y'all know this is part two of the Real Housewives of Atlanta season two reunion. But before we get into it, y'all know the deal. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, go down, hit that subscribe button, and also make sure you hit that notification bell so whenever I post content, you get notified. But let's get into part two of this reunion. So tonight we kick right off with Portia's foot on Eva Nick once again. She pulling up the receipts of, I guess, Kenya talking about Cynthia not holding Eva accountable for the things that she says on the show. Now, you know, last week we talked about those receipts that Portia was pulling up. So tonight they kind of go into detail about it a little more. And that is kind of true. Cynthia, she was riding for Eva just like she do Kenya all season. Anything Eva said, she kind of had to fix it and backpedal and try to fix it up. Although Eva was on his hands some shady. So this season, everybody kind of, it almost like it was baby gate this season. You had Kenya coming back with Brooklyn, Eva, of course, pregnant once again. Y'all know that's her storyline. And then, of course, um, Portia now has Pilar. Now, we kind of see some things. Everybody kind of evolving as a mom. And also, Marlo has her two nephews. So we kind of get to see another side of Marlo that we normally don't get to see. But I think it was really good for them to show, you know, her with her nephews. Honestly, they can give Marlo a peach next season off that alone. Her raising her, her nephews. That's a good storyline on, on its own. But anyway, they kind of get into how they... Portia and Kenya kind of bonded in the beginning of the season, you know, with them both being new moms. And we, we all, we know their record. We know what happened a few years ago. Now, me, I knew that wasn't going to last too long, them being friends or anything like that. Because once Nene and Portia fixed everything, that was going to be out the window. Because, I don't know, I never saw them as friends, honestly. That's just my opinion. So, that relationship never gave me anything that we could really... Trust that was going to be something long term. Now, of course, Bravo Messi editing, you know, rolled the tapes back of Kenya, all her epic moments from this season, throwing shade at everybody, and pretty much her, you know, just dogging some people out. We saw the situation where her busting up Marlo's event. Now, she does do this thing where she, you know, own my business and don't, you know, don't sabotage anything that she does, but she don't have that same respect for any of the other girls. Now, she did bust up Marlo even had a whole band, and all of that. Now, now Andy kind of pulled her card on that. You know, do you think it's okay for you to do that? It, it, does your events are the only ones that matter? He put her card on that. And I, I get the feeling that I don't know if he necessarily liked Kenya. Of course, he a producer on his show, so he probably liked her for the show. But... He be gathering her when he can. So now she goes at Nene about the guy that Nene was dating while her and Greg were divorced, saying that Marlo and Nene was with him at the same time. Now, I don't know if that's true or anything like that, but come on now. We clearly know Greg and Nene still together. Regardless of them stepping out on each other, <laughs> they still together. Now, they try to get to the bottom of the cookie lady situation as far as the who told what. And it comes out that, of course, Cynthia had put Tanya on game in Canada that the cookie situation, in fact, was about her. Now, when they get back to Atlanta, of course, we saw Tanya did have that wig, so she, she was ready with that. Now, I'm trying to understand why Kenya's so upset about the wig situation. Like, just be honest. Like, most women wear wigs and weaves for protective styling. So, I don't think it does anything to your business that or your brand that you wear a wig, like just be honest, you you wear a wig, sis. Like half the people sitting up there got on some pieces or a wig. Like get over it. Now I don't know why Eva want to keep chiming in during these situations because, like I said last week, Portia is schooling her. Her foot's on her neck and she ain't let her get a word in. Like just be quiet. At this point, you have lost your peach in this reunion. It's nothing else for you to say. Portia got you in lockdown, so just accept. So Andy asked Candy why she went at Portia on Twitter when she was asked about, you know, the Kenya situation with the cookie lady. Now, of course, I, if, if anybody thinks that Candy gonna hold Kenya accountable for anything, you're a fool. It's not gonna happen. Like, you just gotta accept the fact that she gonna do what Candy do, she gonna ride for Kenya, and nobody else. Like, that's just the facts. She might take up for Cynthia every now and then, but Kenya is her puppet master. That's who controlling her. 
Now, Andy asked Candy, you know, how Mama Joyce and Todd's relationship is. Now, she said, you know, they in a better place. But, y'all, we saw all season Mama Joyce was classic Mama Joyce. She was tagging Todd and dragging him for dear life. I just think Candy just got to accept the fact that her mama don't. She don't like him. Like, that's just that. She feel like they not equally yoked. And he don't really bring much to the table financially. And y'all know she want Candy to be able to be somebody to take care of Candy or meet Candy halfway. And she feel like her is not that person. Now, Portia said that good. She said, Mama Joyce rocks for her daughter. And I agree, she rocks for her daughter. To a certain extent, though, you, your parents got to let you be grown. At that age, Candy, what, 40-something years old? Mama Joyce got to let Candy live her life. Now, Eva has this really emotional moment. Now, y'all know this season, Marley got her name changed from Kevin McCall's last name to Mike's last name. Now, I'm not sure if he has adopted her yet, but she pretty much knows Mike as her father. Now, she kind of tells the story of, you know, them. they really didn't know each other long before she got pregnant. They were just, she was single and they were, you know, just casually dating and she got pregnant with Marley. And in the midst of that, he was abusive. You can definitely tell Kevin McCall is, that that's a different kind of character. Now, a couple of months ago, he was, he was in Atlanta down to the Fulton County Courthouse trying to fight with, with the sheriff and they laid him on his back and took him right on to jail because he was trying to sue Eva for custody and child support. Now, I don't know what in his right mind would make him think that he can go down there to the courthouse and sue Eva for custody and child support. Now, mind you, the little girl, she barely know the guy probably at this point, honestly, from the looks of it. She don't know him as, as her father. So I don't think, I, what judge in their right mind would have gave him custody of her? Anyway, she tells a story about him being abusive. And they, they all kind of have a, a moment where some of the women can definitely relate to, you know, being in a domestic violence situation. So that was a nice moment for them to have. So we get the Dennis and Portia situation. Now, I'm kind of shocked that we just now get into that when that was a big part of her storyline. But we get to that. They, you know, ask her how her and Dennis are. Are they in a good place? Now, they, she said they are quarantined together right now with her mom and PJ. And... They, you know, in a much better place and they trying to work on their relationship. Now, the facts of the matter are Portia and Dennis got together too soon. They didn't know each other. He was still trying to roam the streets. And it just wasn't time for them, one, to be having no baby, like, and talking about marriage. It was just too soon. Now, they asked her how she felt about everybody comments about Dennis and the bestiology rumors. Of course, y'all know when Miss uh, <laughs> Omar with Tasha K drop that tea but and like she say she she know what show she on she know people's gonna have opinions and they was gonna say stuff now as far as her and dennis get married dennis doesn't want to have a big wedding i mean i can kind of get it he don't really know who like him or not me you know i let everybody get a relationship but i i don't think they like the perfect match of course just a couple months ago he was seen in a restaurant in atlanta like three or four o'clock in the morning having a conversation with some women. Of course, she knew he was going to be out, but of course, when you see those pictures in that video, it just looked totally, it don't look good, especially for somebody with a track record of cheating. Now, I don't know what happened with Candy and Nene, but it, you can see it brewing all season. They started out okay, but then by the end of the season, it, 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 it's, it's not there. So Nene asked Candy, well, since she didn't want to comment on Portia and Dennis' relationship, why she felt the need to comment on her and Wendy's relationship. Now, I don't know the correlation between the two, but maybe she was just saying, like, if you don't want to comment on friendships and relationships, don't comment on mine. Maybe that's what she was coming from. Either way, they going at it. They doing what they do, throwing reads back and forth. Well, Candy trying to read. It's my opinion. She's trying to read. And Andy hit him with that mute button real quick. And they still going at it. They don't even know they on mute. Now, y'all know Candy can't hang with Nene when it comes to her mouth. I'm just saying. Like, I, don't, I and honestly, I feel like she got a little bit more energy because it is virtually. Because if she was, if they were sitting on the couch right now, how many times would Candy have been broken out into tears? Let's be honest. Now, Andy wants to get to the bottom of why Candy and Nene just can't get along. Now, we all know it's been like that. They've been up and down the entire time that Candy been on this show and Nene been on this show together. Like, 
they some people just don't get along and not meant to be friends. And I think that's one of those relationships where it just ain't meant to be. But so we wrap it up with them doing, you know, showing Kenya and Cynthia kind of relationship over the season. Now Nene name does pop up a lot. Honestly, a lot of their conversations wouldn't be conversations if Nene name wasn't in the midst of it. So of course she's sitting there like why they're showing it just like oh this they, they wouldn't have nothing to talk about pretty much if I wasn't here. Now, it seemed like Miss Leeds had enough of it. She closed that laptop down and did not come back. Now, I don't know if she came back, if we'll see her come back in the third episode or what, but she had had enough of them. Now, to me, this second episode, uh, it wasn't as good as the first one to me, but y'all let me know y'all thoughts. Again, if you have not subscribed to this channel, Go down, hit that subscribe button, and also make sure you hit a notification bell. So whenever I post content, you get notified. But y'all let me know what y'all thoughts are about the reunion so far in the comments. And I'll see y'all next time.